Yeah. Well, you would be correct. Either that, or we are seeing the most high-level Bayonetta Ditto neutral that I have ever seen. It's entirely possible. <laughs> you never know. Oh my god. So, yeah, Elrox is, uh... His Bayonetta is relatively new as far as I know, and, uh... His Bayonetta is not super new. It actually has been around since, uh... Super Bit Wars, oh. back back when uh, Mew Squared got sec took out Mewtwo King with that, the. Uh, oh, wait, was Bayonetta out back then? That was the week of Bayonetta's release. I'm pretty sure. Oh, it so it's a very old after. Bayonetta then. Yes, he is. He I is haven't practiced. seen Elrox in a while. Yeah, aside from last week. So. He is from Arkansas, so we don't get to see him too often. But he is some of that great Southern talent that we've been seeing a lot of here at Low Tier City yeah. 5. We haven't seen too many crazy upsets, but we have seen a few here, and you never know. I doubt it, but you could see one right here. And there's always a possibility. Especially in a Bayonetta dinner. Elrox is, however, not the explosive type of Bayonetta that we are used to. Normally the uh, take one or two hits and leave them. Kind yeah, of not the... Uh, not up there with the uh, the Limas and the Aerolinks in the uh, combo game. Mm -hmm. So here we go, game one. And it's going to be on Smashville because honestly, what else were you expecting? All right. Alrox does get it started with the forward airs. Starting off with a bit of percent, but Abba. Okay. With Doesn't get too much start. Right. Tried to get something started, but Alrox was able to escape with a witch twist of his own. All right. Rock's just getting a quick hit and not too much to talk about. Mostly getting a standard Bayonetta fare after the uh, out of this ditto so far. Oh, there we go. Getting the forward tilt. A rarely seen move coming out of the bayo. Connecting to the air? No. I thought he was going to finish off yeah. Abadongo quickly. But like we've seen, you know, Elrock's not usually the kind to finish his plate so early. Uh, usually ended up with a forward throw or a back air. Oh wow, both <laughs> players going synchronized for which, time. which times. Neither <laughs> player felt comfortable right there. That is a pretty decent panic button, but that's probably the best synchronized swimming you are going to see in Smash. Okay, Elrock's not able to trap Abba at the ledge. Even if you're Bayo, another Bayo at the ledge is still terrifying to deal with. Oh yeah. Ooh. Well, Elrock's gonna get the first stock here. Yeah, showing you why. Abadongo a little bit overextending, trying to cover the ledge, and Elrock's just zoomed right past him with the afterburner kick and set up perfectly for the back air. So, neighbor, what is it that might have attracted a Bayonetta Ditto to Abadongo rather than playing Mewtwo? Uh, Mewtwo is huge and just gets eaten alive by Bayo combos, so maybe he didn't want to deal with any of that. Absolutely possible, but he is going up against another quite good Bayonetta player here, but actually going to get a rather low up air kill. Usually we see the, usually we don't even see them. That's how high up they are. Yeah, fair point. You know, normally we hear the up air and we know it's there, but we don't see it. We don't see it. It's invisible. Okay, right now Abadongo bringing this back right now with the Witch Twist combo. He's actually going to take the lead here. Does take control. He did have a. He's a bit of control. He was going back and forth on the first uh, stock as well. But all that mattered was, you know, when Elrox connected that back air. So if it continues this way, it's really either player's game. Wow, Elrox nice. catching nice. him out with the back air. Going way deep with the down air. Yeah, definitely a gutsy move. Oh, Abba catching him. Oh, Abba Tonga with, with the footstool, but the Nair not going to finish it out. Yeah, didn't really have... Oh my goodness. Even, even Abadonka's like, ooh, all right. That was <laughs> not a sloppy finish. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what a game that we play. Well, we'll see if Elrox can finish a, what he started. Yeah, absolutely an impressive showing. Yeah. Uh, we might see, um, since Abba has gotten a feel for Elrox, he might understand that Elrox isn't a super combo heavy Bayo. Maybe he will swap to the Mewtwo. It's possible. Maybe his concerns will be alleviated, or maybe he will continue on as he will mm -hmm. with the Bayo. Boy, who would have thought that after the past couple of long, grueling endurance matches, a Bayonetto Ditto? I can't. I just can't say it's the worst tongue twister ever. Yeah. But who would have thought that a Bayonetta Ditto would be the thing to wake you up this morning? Right. I feel like uh, this match is my coffee. Yeah, this is uh, this is sure to put a pep in the step of anybody, particularly 
any Avadango fans who just saw him take game wow, one. Wow, what a great witch time, but doesn't go for the uh, normal setup that we see after uh, witch time players grab the ledge in uh, going for the trump and then covering near every option. And oh. the, the weird part about that is that if you do the trump a little bit too early, uh, your invisible, or not invisible, invincibility will run out before theirs does, and then you will be the one that gets trumped. Perhaps LRX not comfortable with that setup, uh, so he didn't go for it. Now Ava sending Elrox off stage. Just backs up when Bayo's at the ledge, doesn't want to deal with the afterburner kick shenanigans. Okay, sets up on the platform, but Elrox finds his way off. It's just such a close game. Abanago really waiting for Elrox to come in hard, but uh, both of those witch times failing, and this is still a somewhat even game. Okay, that deep back air might just do it. Set up for the neutral air. And Abba has no fear going deep. Oh, goodness, the back to back witch time. <laughs> Abba Dongo getting that stock shooting off the stage like a rocket. And he has a pretty hefty lead right now with just 83 built up on him. And the ability to get out of combos and only away Bayonetta can. Ooh, I love that conversion. The late hit up air into a little bit of a witch twist. Wasn't able to get much after. Um, but just getting a good extra bit of damage tacked on. Okay, Abadango with an unsafe heel slide finisher. But Elrox, again, we talked about how his punish game is somewhat weak, and that showed it right there. Yeah, just getting an up throw, didn't quite get any follow ups, but now Elrox taking a page out of Abba's book, went for the deep uh, back air, but didn't set up properly for an edge guard to follow, and Abba finds his way back on. And I think it may be that Elrox perhaps just not as confident as Abadango was. We saw Abadango rocket off the stage at light speed with a falling nair. Yeah, one thing he's been doing over Abba so far, though, is punishing these witch times. Abba's been going for a few too many, and Elrox has waited almost all of them out and gone for back airs to punish. Yeah, and right now we're looking like Abadango is going to take this, but if Elrox has anything to say about it, he just might be able to find the big conversion that he needs to send this into a game three. And it's time for Elrox to speak now or forever hold his peace. Oh, going for the witch time there is something that Abadango definitely would have done himself, so he was ready for it. Let's nice. see how Abadango might be able to finish this off, but a good bat within to get out of that. And that was a perfect setup by Abba at the ledge. Setting up for the down tilt at a space that made you uncomfortable to neutral get up, but if you roll behind him, uh, then he can scoop you up with a Witch Twist. Abadango still going with these Afterburner Kicks, and that one will do it right there. Taking it 2-0 over Elrox, but a relatively close 2-0, especially for that first game. That first game was definitely close. The second one a little bit more dominant by Abba. He figured some things out, but uh, Elrox definitely put up a fight. Yeah. So good stuff to both of them. Uh, not surprising that Abadango would be moving on to later in his pool's bracket. As expected, Abba likely to make it out winner's side. One would believe. Yeah. We would like to think so. We'd like to think that he will make top eight. Excuse me, I have to sneeze. Would you like a clean? Never mind, it was all a lie. <laughs> we have them. Do we? They are... <laughs> ah! right in front Neighbor, of your face. could you grab that three pack of Kleenexes just, and just show the people how oblivious I am? Do we have Kleenex? Well, do we? Why would I? <laughs> but do we have Kleenex? You jumped. What a big surprise. <laughs> you haven't seen that video. What is that going to do? It's rather good. It's rather good. Anytime you hear us put that exact inflection on anything, we are most definitely referencing. What is that, that going, going to do? To do? Well, what is that going what to do? What is that going to do? Why don't you tell me? I know, you know, but they don't know. Mike Ross is a legend. I love Mike Ross so much. All right, glad we've established that. <laughs> hey, while we've got a second, I would just like to take a second and perhaps shout out one of our sponsors, and I'd like to talk about one that you're rather familiar with. Oh, yes. Which is the National Video Game Museum. Neighbor, tell us all about them. The National Video Game Museum, uh, located in Frisco, down at 8004 Dallas Parkway, if you guys want to check it out in the uh, site in the um, Frisco Discovery Center. 
you know, the same building as SciTech. It is a wonderful oh. museum dedicated to the history of museums, kind of start to finish, takes you through you a timeline. What did I say? Museums. <laughs> It's a museum dedicated to video games. Takes you through the timeline of like where we started to where we are now. Um, there's the, the cool thing about it though is a uh, fun fact: the owners of that museum actually hate museums because they're boring and you can't do anything in them. Oh yeah. Uh, they actually are more of a fan of like doing stuff that's cool. So they made this museum super interactive, uh, so you can play like every video game in there. There's an arcade inside the museum, and that might give a credence to why they would like to support an event such as the Let's Play Gaming Expo where Low Tier City 5 is being hosted because Let's Play Gaming Expo is not a normal convention. This is actually a convention based around getting people to come over, play games with some new people. I mean, we've got tons of retro games. we got like 90 Tecmo Bowl setups. Uh, you know, uh, Microsoft's holding an event over there where they're holding Halo tournaments, Titanfall tournaments, Forza tournaments. Yeah, this is a super cool place. Uh, full of stuff to do uh, beyond just all of the Smash events that we have. Mm -hmm. But the Smash events are what you are here to watch, and so we will get into it. One of these players you probably know very well, and that is Larry Lurb, representing Misfits. Mm -hmm. On the other side... We have Tenny. We have Tenny. If I am not mistaken, rocking the Charizard. Rocking the Charizard, which is uh, decisively mid to low tier. Yeah, Charizard is not the strongest of picks in the world, uh, but when done well, he is terrifying. In mm -hmm. fact, we have plenty of good Charizards here today. Chuck Nasty being the best in his region, yeah. number one in Oklahoma with Charizard. With Charizard, not just the best Charizard in his region, the best in his region.